Hi, my name is Mark Russo. I'm a saxophone player currently with the Doobie Brothers. Catch me with the Tommy Igo Big Band. Actually, it's called the Groove Conspiracy. And I'm over here at Cannonball in the villa playing a bunch of their saxophones and having a great time today. When I was a kid, I heard um, a solo you did on a Yellow Jackets album. Uh, it sounded like overtone effects and, and things like that. You know what I'm talking about on that? Um, I'm not really sure, but maybe off of the, maybe the spin. I mean, I don't exactly remember what I played. It was just something like... Uh... <laughs> Something like that, um, and that's basically, um, I tend to talk in concert pits, so I was going to say, it's just, we're just in E-flat, which, uh, as you know, is a C on this beautiful Cannonball Alto, yeah. um, and I'm just leaving the octave key press the whole time, and basically playing a... Uh, one seven five one uh so c b flat g c mm -hmm. and and then an overtone comes out on the low c i couldn't tell you how or or why i just know that that happens that's cool and there's a lot of books out there that can explain how to get false fingerings and overtone series and all that stuff and then you just experiment and have some fun with it you know because the same with the b flat will sound an f And then you just go up a half step and get into some more crazy stuff. So, so I, I just have a question. Your altissimo, all your altissimo stuff that you do, all that exciting stuff up high, how'd you learn how to, to, to do that? Did you like sit in a room for days and uh, no, I, I, and... I sat in a uh, nightclub for days, oh, yeah. uh, every night, yeah. playing in a disco band oh. back in the 70s. Yeah. Um, you know how loud it is when you're playing, in a, and it's even till, still today, you know, playing without monitors, and, and you can't hear anything. And so when you're down low on the horn trying to play something, and you can't hear anything, it's like, I just got frustrated. So I started playing where I could hear it. And I was like, oh, I can hear this kind of cutting through the din mm -hmm. of all the guitars, drums, cymbals, and bass, and all that stuff. And, and uh, um, but that is true. Uh, I, that's not exactly how, but I actually went with the uh, Ted Nash studies in high harmonics, found the, some fingerings that worked, and then just went from there. Mm -hmm. If I, I, I found it useful to take what, uh, he gave, and even um, even in you know any book that shows you fingerings is a great launching pad, and then from there you can find your own. You know, like I would hunt and peck, and uh, if I had a, one that you know worked really well, then I would just start lifting and pushing stuff down until I found found something that worked. If the if the the fingering in the book didn't work for me, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Cool. that's kind of what I did. And then cool. you know when you as you just get this old, you just do it more and more and it becomes second nature. So yeah, I hate to practice, so it's mostly mm -hmm. on the job training. Wow, <laughs> fantastic. Could well, you, yeah, yeah, play a little. Yeah, do a little of that. I'll just oh, Yeah, you're making me sit down and play too. <laughs> Yeah, you do want to be me. It's good to be me. I come to, 
I come to Sandy, Utah and get yeah. to play these cannonball horns. Yeah. And so it's good to be me. Yeah. See, it's easy. I'm telling you, all you have to do is go to the Ted Nash Studies in Higher Harmonics. But I bet if I went back and looked at the book, I'd go, oh, that doesn't work for me. You know, but that's, that's, that really is what I did. Been in the Doobie Brothers for uh, going on 18 years now. Wow. And we've done this tune called Long Train Running, and it's basically just G minor blues. And so, you know, when you're doing that night after night, uh, you kind of get used to it and go on autopilot. Well, they recently, uh, about two years ago, decided to drop it to G flat. And I have never really played in G flat very often. I, I found that to be quite challenging. And let's see if I can do some of that. Uh, in the old key, it was really easy. And now we got to do it in a different key. So and it's well, I can't wait till they go down a half step more. <laughs> What's what goes after G flat? Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, sometimes I've been asked questions about uh, certain sounds and uh, styles, and um, like when you're playing your instrument and different things like sometimes you can growl in the horn and get this really you know kind of i don't know rock sound <laughs> you know so that's just humming while you're playing the note and then like junior walker used to do this really great thing uh, obviously he's not the only sax player that ever did it but he would um uh like you do a tongue trill to make this really cool sound. I mean, I'm assuming that's how we did it. I, I didn't know how we did it until I figured this out. And then you just kind of go. Yeah, so that, that's just a, a flutter tongue. It's called, it's. Yeah. So if you do that, if you know how to do that, you can do that while you're playing it's obviously you got to get the tongue out of the way of the mouthpiece and probably get those corners nice and tight uh i, I don't even know let's see yeah that's what it is 